I bought this BMW for 500 bucks and got her back on the road again after four years of sitting broken. Let me show you how I did it. Welcome back to another day off, folks. Today we are working on the 330i, the Will It Run car. We got the rest of the parts in. I got filter and some oil. We're finally gonna get the oil out of this pig. See what that looks like. We got both belts, thermostat, water pump, fuel filter, lower hose sensor, upper and lower radiator hose, two headlight sockets, Disa rebuild kit, oil filter housing gasket, Vanos oil line. So we're officially ready to do the full teardown on this. I got her up on ramps, got some tire pressure in it today. Let's get the oil out. Let's get cracking on this thing. Hopefully we'll take it on the road today and see if it's roadworthy. She's pretty dirty. There's the bolt I dropped for that power steering bottle. Well, the bottom side doesn't look any different than a comparable E46. Potential oil pan gasket leak over time, maybe a power steering leak over here too. Uh, you don't really know until you pressure wash them off and can get a good baseline. So we're gonna get the thrust plate pulled off. That way we don't catch all the coolant uh, if we do leak any. And we'll get a better view of this engine on the top side once we get that cooling fan out. But all in all, everything's there. Car looks pretty complete. The fenders are still there, which is nice. Normally these are all busted to shit and the uh, ambient temp sensor is gone and ripped out. But uh, car is in pretty decent shape. So let's get the oil out, get that thrust plate off, keep going. Get this oil cap. Looks a little rough, folks. Pretty nasty looking oil. Real dark brown. We'll see what it looks like when we drain it, but definitely glad we're doing a oil service now. Can't wait to get a lift. Oh, look at that spider, man. The control arm bushings are in surprisingly good shape. I'm super happy this has a manual trans. They're so much easier to work on. Doing a service on them is just a fucking cake. That oil looks foul. I haven't seen that oil that bad in a long time. I like to just stick a pry bar in here and nice. The control arm bushings are still decent. And just a little context for you guys that have watched a couple videos by now. I really appreciate the support. A little bit of backstory. I used to work at a BMW shop for roughly about six years. I specialized in BMW and Mini Cooper. I worked my way up from entry level technician up to shop foreman. So that's pretty much where the basis of my BMW knowledge comes from and why I've been tooling around with them for a little while. So. I do really enjoy BMWs though. Uh, these three series are the best daily drivers. So last year I was driving like 20 plus miles to work each way and I got this thing for 500 bucks. Well, my other one and uh, just made such a good commuter. My coworker told me that he had a brother with this car sitting in his driveway. And so I got this one for 500 too. Lots of room now, cool. Now we can get these belts off of here. This top one, I believe we popped this cover out. Just be a hydraulic tensioner with a eight mil hex. Be able to just rotate this hex, pop that off. Cool. This thing was pretty smoked, pretty shot. Now we're gonna need a 16 mil for the AC belt. Clockwise. Let me get this belt off the AC compressor. This AC belt was pretty worn too. Definitely both needed replacing. And while we keep working, we can start pulling some coolant out of here. That's just clear water. 
You'll probably want to break your water pump pulley bolts loose while the ho while the belt's still on so it can apply some resistance, but a quarter inch ratchet or an electric ratchet just with some breakaway torque usually gets the job done if you just hold it. We could start taking this alternator out too since we're doing the oil filter housing. We're gonna need to pull that out, get the bracket available. Idler pulley. A little noisy, but they're easy enough to replace if it goes bad. There's your bolt. I just like to get a pry bar in here between the filter housing and the alternator. Just get it wedged out just to kind of break the seal that it's sitting in. It's got one of those little slip nuts that's pressed into the alternator. So when you tighten it, it snugs down, but this one came out easy. DC power to the alternator. Just take this 19 millimeter nut off here. This wire runs down to the alternator and this post has power from the battery. Now you can DC our power. We'll just suck her out. A little bit of mess. Now we can get this power steering pump out of the way. the floor. Two connectors to DC, one here, one here. Cool, now we can break this housing loose. Let's see how severe this oil filter housing was leaking. I mean, a little bit of spillage, but there was stuff pulled up on the side of the block before I even broke it loose. Timing cover's pretty dirty. We've got oil saturation all the way back to the engine mount. Uh, the engine mount bracket's pretty wet too, so. All in all, definitely needed to be done. You can see the uh, coolant pipe here is pretty, getting some oil saturation too. You know we're gonna have to do those in the future. Gotta do them on every E46, but not yet, not today. As far as the oil filter housing goes, there's nothing really out of the ordinary. The gasket is just hammered. Um, it's nice and flat. There was no failure in particular. I mean, eventually these are gonna fail at one point or another. They all leak. BMWs le love to uh, mark their territory. Leaking horsepower. So slap a new gasket in it, maybe hit it with the pressure washer, call it a day. I'm not gonna detail it, but I'm just gonna hit it with some degreaser, maybe with some brake cleaner on top. All right, got our housing. Okay. Woo, crispy. That is just hard as a rock. Check this out. Yep, rubber just got hard over time.
Better than nothing. Right on. Now we can get this surface prepped. All right. So it's prepped and cleaned. Start dropping our bolts back in. All right, for all you torque Nazis out there, 22 Newton meters. Now we can take our 19 and snug these banjo bolts up. Slap our oil filter back down. All right, y'all, so how this alternator mounts is this bolt runs through the alternator, through the oil filter housing, sandwiches the alternator to the oil filter housing bracket. So this nut slides back and forth, right? And so when the alternator was originally installed, they run it down, this nut slides forward, it creates a lot of tension on that bracket. But in order to get this alternator back over that oil filter housing bracket, it's a real pain and it can be a real tight fit. What you can do is with a bench vise or with a C-clamp. So you wanna press on that nut, but you wanna be able to have vacant space behind it for it to push. Let's see if we can get some movement out of it. It's usually pretty tight. Sometimes I have to do it on a bench, on a bench vise. There it goes. So it popped, that nut pushed out and now it's pretty much flush with the alternator. You can see that shiny spot right there. That's how much the nut pushed out once it popped. So now this thing's just gonna fall right in and we'll just be able to slip that bolt in with ease. Just fall right in. And I've done them without that trick and you're gonna make it a lot harder on yourself if you don't break that nut loose. Ah, uh, major doofus move. I gotta do the power steering pump first. So this has to come back out. And try this alternator again. It's tight. Power wires on, connectors on, duct is on. So we can put our power steering bottle back so far Heck yeah yeah all right now we can get this lower hose out of here So for this T-stat, we got a 13 and then 310. So we'll just knock those out real quick. All right, then to get this thermostat out of here. So it slips underneath this bracket in the top right corner. So just quarter turn it to the right. Then it'll come out for you. So this unit was leaking I believe about right up here, trickling down. Um, it's real crispy. You can see some evidence of it leaking in the past. 
definitely due for replacement. All right, so for this water pump, we just have four nuts holding it on, but it's got a cool little trick to get, a, get the water pump out. Take off your four nuts, take two of the bolts from your thermostat housing and thread them into this threaded portion on the left and right side of the water pump and just run them down evenly. A little bit on this side. Look at that. As you thread these in, they're threaded through the water pump housing and they will push that water pump and break that seal loose for you. So just take your old T-stat bolts or any old like six mil, uh, 10 millimeter head bolts with the matching thread pitch and just run those in and it'll pop it right out. You can see some real crispy down here. Um, there's a weep hole right here for the bearing inside the water pump and basically as the water pump starts to develop play it'll leak from this weep hole so definite evidence of leaking on the water pump too so i'm glad we're getting these both replaced next step get this mating surface cleaned up clean mating surface as always i'd only recommend using one of these if you've used them before <coughs> with a soft scotch bright head like this you're not gonna do too much damage. You just can't uh, stay in one spot and really wear down wear down the, the housing too much. Put some brake cleaner on a rag. Let's see what our finish looks like. Clean up the ceiling surface, make sure there's any old Make sure there's no old O-ring in there, but really just give it a quick wipe out. Those are nice and clean, good to go. All right, as always, with the new O-ring going in, gotta hit it with some Seal Glide, right? Get some heavy, thicker lubricant on that O-ring first. Get that first initial saturation, and then, whoo, caught it. This one's got a metal impeller too, so it's a bit of an upgrade. And then of course, fog it with some lighter, wet silicone. And that should just pop in effortlessly. All right, I'm happy with that. Slap our nuts on. All right, water pump's torqued up. Now I gotta slap in this thermostat. Do the reverse, reverse order, right? Uh, install it flush with it cocked a quarter turn clockwise, and then you can slide that hole for that 13 millimeter bolt and get it underneath this, this tang. And while we're here, we might as well lube up the fittings on this new thermostat. We can throw this pulley back on. So kind of line it up beforehand. There's a wide side and a narrow side. So I just line it up to match on the water pump. Sometimes they can be a pain in the ass to get started, but just kind of spin it around until you find her. Hold the pulley by hand and hit it with a wrench or a ratchet. Now that we got this stuff knocked out, we can get our belt back on. Check all the pulleys, make sure they're all 
flush and seated. Now it's time for the AC belt. Like I say in most videos when I take the belt off, always double check, make sure the belt isn't hanging over any ribs. It was the same exact engine. I had done an idler and a tensioner for a customer. Apparently I left the belt hanging off one rib off this crank pulley. That rib separated, sliced the lower radiator hose loose. Customer blew their head gasket. We had to buy the car from them. It was a mess. So just a reminder, always check and make sure the belts are sitting flush. No ribs of the belt are hanging off any of the pulleys. All right, belts are on. Now we could probably throw in the radiator hoses. Hoses are in nice and tight, but we're gonna have to check with the pressure tester afterwards. So we'll see, for now we can get the fan back in and uh, get a little closer to firing her up. Always check your tabs down here. Just make sure that the fan is sitting flush and flat against the radiator. A lot of people miss those lower tabs and uh, they don't seat their electric fans and fan shrouds all the way. Since our alternator's all buttoned back up, we can pull our 19 back off, get our power connected back to the alternator. All right, so the cooling system should be tight. We can get some coolant back in it now. And what I'm planning on doing is just pressure testing it while I'm wrapping up the rest of the vehicle. Still got the diesel rebuild to do, and we got to put oil in it and probably a couple other items. All right, we can take this bleeder out. Let that fluid level drop. We're just gonna top this up until we get fluid out of the bleeder. All right, that other stuff was pretty concentrated, so we'll just finish up with some water. Just till we get fluid out the bleeder screw. You can always evacuate and pull some out afterwards if it's overfilled. All right, we got fluid out of the screw. Give it a little quarter turn. These will strip out, so you gotta be gentle with them. Feel like 18 PSI, 16, put it right on 17, and let that chill while we finish up the rest. All right, we need to get some oil back in it. So we're using this O'Reilly Full Synthetic Euro 540. This stuff uh, was cheap, but more important, it meets the BMW Long Life 01 synthetic standard. So we're just gonna use this. Cool to see that O'Reilly's oil is made in the U.S. You wouldn't think it. So this thing's going to take seven quarts. We'll throw this full jug in there. And... So these are five quart jugs, so we'll just need uh, another two quarts out of this one. Seven quarts total. All right, next we're gonna pull this Disa out. We're gonna rebuild this puppy. First time I've done this. I put a touch of Loctite on there too, and it didn't, well, it kind of stayed in. 
Um, Loctite works with pressure though, so. Um, I mean, it kind of worked, but it still has lots of play. Let's get this to the bench and get it rebuilt. All right, so I got a Disa rebuild kit off eBay. I got two of them. I'll do another video on my other 330i and probably just do a sole video on just replacing this. Anyways, um, haven't done one of these before, but can't be too difficult, right? Cool, that comes out. We take this pin out, I assume. Pick this off now okay. all right so we're on the right track we just need to get this uh, lever out which is kind of a pain um, they're saying you take a lag and Throw it down in there so we can give that a try. Uh-huh. Cool. So I'm going to put this in to help get that screw extracted. All right. So that lag is just to bite that lever. So now we can try to get this out again. Boom. We got her out. Now we got an empty Disa cavity. We got the O ring picked out. So I'm just going to clean up this base. It's got a lot of carbon buildup. Okay. Then we can install this Disa. It's a little tight. I'm a little concerned with, but we'll see. All right, now that bell crane can go back in. Well, it feels a little tight. Um, we'll try it because it, it sticks when I actuate it. I feel like the tolerances are a little bit too tight, so I might take this off and shave this down a little bit. Let's try that. It's sort of catching up here at the tip, so I'm gonna shave this down and shave this down a skosh. Let's test fit it with the with the bell crank and all and see how it does then. It's what you get when you order Chinese parts. So lesson learned. Probably order a factory factory uh, Disa next time. Maybe not BMW, but you know, some a little bit more reputable. I just bought these because they were cheap and I needed two of them. It's gonna take some meat off of uh, this here so it spins a little easier. Shave this down. Man, what a pain though. Oh yeah. All right. So this thing was painted, whatever. And um, it was just binding really bad. But I shaved it down. I shaved down the, the crank. I shaved down the flapper valve at the top and the bottom. And now it actions well again, and I can cover the pot, and it holds. So, it wasn't easy, it wasn't pretty, but we have a functioning DISA again. So, let's put it in and let's test it out. I think we should be good to go. Lock ring's back on, everything's tight, lubricated. So, let's give this a shot. I also scraped out all that old gasket and cleaned it and renewed it with that replacement o-ring that came with the kit i just want to wipe this out one last time give that o-ring a good place to seal let's test this out 
This O-ring kind of sucks. Put some extra silk glide on the O-ring, but we're gonna need some in here in the intake as well. Cause this O-ring they sent me is not cooperating well. We'll hit some lube on the intake side. Well, learn from me. If you're gonna buy a Disa rebuild kit, buy a reputable brand and not Tomcat Auto on eBay. A little more confident with that. Disa valve is in. We're pretty much there, folks. I just need to get this panel back in, back here, um, while I have this stuff available. Check our cooling system test. It's been great holding PSI the whole time. I just like to lube them. I got some headlight sockets to throw in, so I'm gonna do that while the air box is out. I don't even have a bulb to put them in them yet, but I'm gonna put them in. Pressure wash that before we put it back in. All right, y'all. Last but not least, we gotta get this fuel filter swapped out. Uh, it looks like it's been done before. I need my mic, don't I? All right, I'm gonna give you guys the top view while I fire this up, so fingers crossed. Well, so far so good. It's running really good. I need to check the fuel filter, make sure none of that is leaking. I got the defroster running, so we'll need to get the temperature up, bleed the cooling system properly. I like to hold on to the throttle with my hand up, feeling the defroster on max heat. And once I get that defroster hot enough to feel like I'm actually burning my hand almost, then it's usually hot enough for me. Um, it's running really good. The uh, Belt's looking clean. I'm not hearing any noise coming from the serpentine assembly. The thermostat and the water pump held up to the pressure test. The Disa valve, I mean, we'll see. Um, I'm somewhat satisfied with the results from the eBay kit, but it wasn't that nice of a kit. Having to modify the parts wasn't that great, but I'm somewhat confident in it. We'll see though, only time will tell. But I'm gonna take one last look at the fuel filter and then probably take it for a drive. The oil change made a big difference too. That oil was really garbage. Nice to get some fresh stuff in there. So I'm gonna pop down below, check that fuel filter and we'll keep it running. All right, y'all, it is the morning of Christmas Eve. The car is all buttoned up for the most part. I mean, we got all the new parts in, so it's time to give it a real road test. And we're gonna take it on the highway, maybe. Surface streets, we're gonna go to the Dollar General, maybe pick up a Santa hat or something. But I'm gonna take the lady with me, and we're gonna get some shots of this thing cruising along, and we're gonna give it a proper test. So 
Let's see how she does on the road. See if the clutch works, see what the brakes are like, and we'll go from there. Buckle up for safety. Pull up. Brakes are really crunchy. Better. Better. Okay, it moves. It's in first gear. Sure, yeah. If that's where we're going. Clutch works. Second gear works. She stored like a fucking vlog. Did you dare to take it on the highway? We forgot limes. You got one down there. Oh yeah. Or you? Washington. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Handicap. Handicap doesn't count. It does today. It's Christmas Eve. Check. Texas. What's in there? Let's go chalking. No registration or nothing? <laughs> no. O'Reilly. Auto farts. I used to work Christmas Eve at O'Reilly Auto Parts. That shit sucked. I'm working Christmas Eve today. I'm just working in this car. What? We got bulbs. Florida. <laughs> we made it. We made it. We didn't break down. We got seven miles on it so far. Temp gauge is good. No check engine light. Put a full tank of gas in her. She running strong. Parking brake doesn't really hold, but there it goes. Oh yeah. It's running good. Mm -hmm. Running good. Alrighty y'all, it is the morning of Christmas Eve. We just took her on a great spin. Got over seven miles on it. It's running fantastic. It's got an airbag light. A couple bull warnings I need to address, but other than that, it is mint. Uh, take a look. Cooling system is bone dry. It's back to sewing machine status. I got some degreaser at the general store, some spray nine, which works really good. So I might pressure wash this off today. 
But other than that, I'm really happy with the progress. She pretty much just needs a cleaning now. We need to get a set of tires on her. The rear tires are pretty bald. But all in all, great Christmas gift. I'm real happy about it. She's running great. And uh, what a great car for about a thousand bucks I'm in it for so far. So maybe we'll end the video out on this note, but she's cherry. She's really cherry. And for everybody that said I was going to break the engine from putting marble down the cylinders, it's not smoking a single peep, and it's idling better than my 2001 with 199,000 miles on it. Same car, 330i. Uh, that one's an automatic trans, so real, real happy, guys. Thanks for the unending support. I really appreciate it. All the subscribers I got on the channel, you guys are freaking awesome. And uh, I'm all doing this because of you, so really appreciate it. Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Kwanzaa, whatever it is you're celebrating. It's about being with friends and family, and it's about spending good quality time together and giving gifts, not receiving. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, everybody. I'll see you on my next day off.